Astrophotography is pain. Pain and suffering. Nothing but constant struggle, effort and hardship. Save yourself. Learn how to play the guitar. Spend more time with your family. Run while you still can. This video is sponsored by High Point Scientific. G'day, Dylan here from the Byron Bay Observatory and you're watching Star Stuff. Obviously, us astronomers are backyard meteorologists as well. We're always complaining about the weather, and I don't mean to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. We've had a 1 in 100 year flood, and then we had another one, and now down south there's a 1 in 500 year flood. I'm beginning to think these statisticians don't really know what they're doing. The number of clear nights, especially moonless clear nights, I've been able to achieve, but that's not even my problem right now. It's been raining so heavily for so long, the humidity level has been so large, my camera has stopped cooling, my filter wheel has stopped filtering. It's uh, really pissing me off. Now, I can't complain. Like, everything else in my life is rosy right now. I'm really enjoying everything. Uh, but I haven't been able to do any astrophotography. So thank God I've got my little backup travel rig because it's clear tonight and for the next few nights and there's no moon and I think I just need to do something. But before I do that, I'll just show you the failed project. So this is what I have been working on. This weird exotic object called Westerland. And this is the Hubble view of this object something that's super uncommon and something that I wanted to get with the C14 because it is a very tightly framed tiny little region of space that most people don't see. And if I look for amateur astrophotography of this region, there's not a lot there. So I was really excited to get something and losing the ability to change the filter meant the only way to keep going with this project would be to pull the filter wheel off, maybe put in a draw system instead. And by the time it cleared up, this target is sort of only available for a half an hour, an hour, before it goes behind some trees for me. So I've kind of lost the opportunity to finish this one and maybe it's one I'll return to next year. But just to give you an idea, this is how the hydrogen was looking before I had to abandon this project. I do have a replacement camera coming, so more on that later. So the first thing I would do is go into Sky Guide. Now did you know in the settings here, there's a fields of view for astrophotography in here, so you can change your camera you can load in custom details or your telescope and if you don't know the details uh, use the calculator on my website now as i explore the sky it's even equatorial so it will rotate based on uh, your particular rotation but then i can just go explore and see what's available to me and it shows me the framing which i think is really cool i mean what would be really nice is to get the dragons dragons down here always a classic. I'll say give me the biggest and it will actually show me a list and I can just check those galaxies uh, and I think Centaurus A might be the most promising here which I've done before in the big rig but it might be nice to get a good wide field of it. G'day, it's Drunk Dylan here, but it's too clear to give up on this, so I'm doing a three-point polar alignment. I hope I'm doing everything correct. It's night time, it's imaging, seems to be working but I'm looking at this image and it's really really small <laughs> and I'm not used to stuff being this small you know it, it's wide field but it, I just I don't think I can do this I think I need to change to dragons I've framed it up and dragons looks good and it looks like a good FOV for this particular smaller telescope but I'm gonna have to rotate 90 degrees so I think it's worth it <sighs> 
this shoot did not go the way I planned it. Um, astrophotography is pain. Did I mention that? A number of things went wrong, but I just wanted to show you the rig that I'm shooting on. This is my travel rig. I've covered this in a few videos. The Skywatcher GTI is a prototype that Skywatcher sent me a while ago, and I've been using the hell out of it, honestly. Uh, it does balance with this heavy of a telescope up the top, but it is all the way down the bottom, the counterweight. But I also wanted to mention that I got this Apertura 75Q from High Point Scientific, who is sponsoring today's show. High Point Scientific are an American vendor who stock all sorts of brands, have a price match guarantee and fully support their product. And I put my money where my mouth is and actually bought the Apertura 75Q because I thought it was just a really good spec telescope and I was right. And it also meant that I got to use their international shipping, which worked fantastic. Check out www.highpointscientific.com or use the links in the description. Uh, but let me tell you what was going wrong with this particular shoot. You know, the GTI mount uh, at this kind of payload isn't great. Like it will, there will be dud frames that I will need to delete. But in this case, there was more than usual. And then when I stacked the RG and B, which were the last channels I did, even though they were 10 second subs, I noticed that the rotation had changed. So what I think happened is over the course of the night, the weight of the camera or the rotation that I had it in wasn't properly screwed down tight enough. So it must have dragged and just slightly rotated. I'm gonna have to crop out a little more than I would have. I did try and rescue what I could in post. It's not the best image, but you guys want to see how I process, so here it is. After blinking, I would normally do the uh, image calibration with dark frames, but someone on my last video about 20 tips mentioned that dark frames aren't as important as they used to be, uh, especially in this modern camera age. And the QHY Minicam 8 is definitely one of those cameras. It has a very, very low noise profile. That's not to say there is no noise, but it does get dithered out. So no image calibration in this. I skipped that step and I went straight into star alignment. Once I'd registered all the stars on the main frame, I then went ahead and just stacked them. And that's a process I have to do separately for every channel. In this case, hydrogen, oxygen, R, G, and B. And the R, G, and B is just for stars, so they were only 10 second exposures. After the image integration step, the stacking, I'll then do the drizzle integration so that I get the biggest image possible. Once I've got all my channels and I've labeled them, I'll go into channel combination and combine the H and the O. I did run blur exterminator, and then I run starnet to make it starless. Then I run the channel combination for the R, G, and B to get that layer, which will be the star layer. I ran Blur Exterminator on that as well, and then Starnet, which doesn't leave you with a lot. This is a 10 second exposure after all. I save that off as RGB Starless. Then I use Pixel Math to subtract the star layer from the RGB, so that will leave me with just the star layer. Now I'm also working with linear data through this whole process, so I haven't actually applied any stretches, but I do adjust the stretch as I go just to see where things are at. I did a little bit of morphological transformation here just to remove the bloat from the RGB stars. But now that I'm happy with the star layer, I do want to commit to that histogram stretch. So I'll use histogram transformation to commit that one. And I'll save that to a separate file. And then I use pixel math to add the RGB star layer back to the starless HOO layer, which is easy to do because the stars are in their own layer. At this point, I will then apply this stretch the way I like it. And then I slept on the image because I didn't realize how red it was uh, until I came back the next day tweaked the levels in Photoshop, resized, applied some gentle noise reduction. And this is the final image. It's not great because astrophotography is pain, but it was nice to do something again. HOORGB is a pretty simple kind of combination I've been using a lot lately, but it works really well on these images where you can really pull out the oxygen and see the separation in these particular regions. I'm not overly happy with this image. It's certainly not as good as the last image I took with this same rig of the Statue of Liberty Nebula, but it's good enough for Instagram. That's it. I hope your astrophotography journey is not as painful as mine is right now. You've been watching Star Stuff and my name is Dylan O'Donnell. And remember, everything is meaningless. We're all going to die.